a magical day all across the Americas and across the United States. Tonight on the News 4 Rundown, we're covering today's solar eclipse like the moon covered the sun. Bravo on that one. Coming up, the sights and sounds here at home and around the country as we witness this once-in-a-lifetime phenomenon. You're watching the News 4 Rundown. It's an event we've been waiting for for months around here. It has come and it is gone. Thanks for joining us for the News 4 Rundown, our newscast streaming for you. I'm Tommy McFly. And I'm Yang. What'd you call it? The Eclipse-a-thon? eclipse -thon. Here we go. It was a long day, <laughs> but a fun day. Millions of Americans looked up to the sky today just to catch a glimpse of the history. A total solar eclipse captivating the country for a jaw-dropping view. Take a look at what you missed if you didn't get to see it. The moon slipped between the Earth and the sun, temporarily blocking the sun's light, creating this spectacle. The last time a total solar eclipse was visible here in D.C. was 2017. About 12 million people were able to experience that eclipse. Well, this one, the path was much larger. NASA says 32 million people live in an area with a clear view of this eclipse from home. They could see it. And thank goodness for NASA mm -hmm. to show us these gorgeous images. They're, it's really cool to see. Now, here's where the eclipse was most visible. The path of totality went through Mexico before entering the U.S. and Texas and traveling through Oklahoma, Arkansas, Missouri, Illinois, Kentucky, Indiana, where our Doug was, mm -hmm. Ohio, Pennsylvania, New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. That's where you saw total eclipse, the totality of it all. Of the heart. Yes. Total eclipse of the sun, not just the heart. People traveled all across the country, like our pal Doug. We'll get to him in just a second. Look at these best seats in the house. Many flocked to Niagara Falls to witness the phenomenon, and it was not a bad view at all for tourists there, although some folks told NBC News on that they expected more of a crowd, but it wasn't too crowded. But remember, the whole thing was trying to pick the place where you'd have the best weather, yes. right? Not just the location. So today's solar eclipse also drew large crowds in Indiana. This line was outside of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, where tens of thousands of people traveled from across the country and even from other parts of the world to be here. Not only could people check out the eclipse, they also had the chance to get a tour of the track and autographs from IndyCar drivers. Two birds with one stone make it a whole event, right? And those guys in girls are probably like, wait, usually we're the main event. Right, exactly. <laughs> and that's where Storm Team 4 Chief Meteorologist Doug Kammerer spent his day. Speaking of the main event, let's check in with him and Indy now. Doug, you had one of the best seats in the house. How's it going? That's right, guys. At the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, we we're actually on the track. This is pit row. That right there is the track. That's where the Indy cars actually go by for the Indy 500. Uh, this is where we had 50,000 people lined up, everybody on the track, for the eclipse, of course, uh, Indianapolis in the path of totality. It was incredible. Four minutes of totality here. And really, we were watching this thing for over two and a half hours as the moon was moving across the sun. And then we got into totality. And once again, four minutes of darkness. I want you to take a look. I, I, I got a little bit of a little bit excited. Um, I'm not going to lie, but uh, take a look at when we enter totality a little bit earlier this afternoon. Almost there, guys. Almost there. BJ, you can't look just yet. But wait, we're about to see the corona. Here we go. Here we go. You get a little bit of activity right here. And now what? Now we can take it. Now we can take Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, guys. This is just incredible. Look to the right. That is Venus to the right. Uh, Jupiter is to the left. Yeah, Jupiter is to the left. I mean, we are in nighttime. So, yeah, you can see I, I, I definitely was a little bit uh, enthused for sure, but it really was something that was amazing. I mean, watching the moon move across to see the corona, to see solar flares, and that's something that's different from 2017. I was at the uh, eclipse in 2017 back in South Carolina. That was at a time when the when the sun was at a solar minimum, so there wasn't a lot of action going on. Now we're at a solar maximum, so we were actually able to see solar flares going on, and there was an incredible solar flare out of the bottom of the sun uh, that really just kind of it all kind of puts you in your place you know uh, you're looking at these huge celestial bodies and you're just realizing here we are so small on the earth as the moon moves between us and the sun it really was incredible and being in Indianapolis at the speedway uh, with those 50,000 people was something that I'll never forget guys and, and I know we've got a long time before the next one but I'll send it back into you guys hopefully we can still stick around for that one <laughs> what a we, memory right and we love seeing 
dug in his element, yes. totally geeking out, <laughs> yes. right? It just makes us feel like we're a part of the experience in Indianapolis. The count um, in the control room was six oh my goshes and six oh my gods. Yeah. He was nearly in tears. I think totally. he had to keep it together. But what a great day uh, for him and for us. And so here at home, mm -hmm. hundreds of people took to the National Mall to get a view of the eclipse. Yeah, it's so weird. Thousands of us all had that same 3 o'clock appointment. It's crazy. Right. We were all just doing that same like, Zoom call. It was a nice day. Yeah. You know, Beautiful. On a Monday. Playing hooky, a huge watch mm -hmm. party, giving people a break from work. I was there, and everyone came together and watched and experienced it. And we learned from Smithsonian reps and NASA reps and made some new friends, too, like Doris from Springfield. I don't, oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> That's gorgeous. Look at how open this is, mm -hmm. and look at all the people, and you've got breezes coming, and it's a beautiful day. I knew you were a local. You know how I knew you were a local? How did you know? Because everyone's over there in the grass, and you were like, I'm going to take a, my bench over here and hang out on the bench. <laughs> okay. Not your first National Mall rodeo, Doris. <laughs> you know, I think even though it's an eclipse and it happens regularly, people are still pretty excited. What I love about a day like this, it's like the big reminder that, hey, man, we still exist in this natural system. There are big things out there like the moon going around the planet, and we're going to get a spectacular show in the sky today. People for generations and thousands and thousands of years have done this together. Yeah, I think it is a very uniquely shared human experience, and it really, to me, brings, you know, we're, we're humans together. We're on this shared planet. We have the same sun. We have the same moon, and we have this um, sometimes once in a lifetime experience where we can experience it together. And I think, you know, being among uh, big crowds like this is is especially the way to go because um, it is it is such a cool shared experience. And then for the next one, when DC has 100% totality with the year 2,444. I may not be here. I might not either, but if we are here, I'll meet you back here on this bench. Okay. Good deal. Deal. Doris and I have a plan. Good. And it was wild. You put the glasses on and you see it. You like you knew it was going to happen, but then when you see it actually happening, you're like, it's happening. It's really happening. Well, you can hear right? from Doris. Like, yeah. wait a minute. That's yeah. beautiful. And you experienced that, right? Like, when you put your glasses on and looked up today. Oh, yeah. It was just so <laughs> great to watch it from the TV screens. Luckily, there are monitors here and there are monitors here and monitors over here. But really. I was inside the I whole had time. To be working, she drew the short straw. But I think, thanks to you and our mm -hmm. team members, I think we really did feel the excitement through our screen. Greens, totally. so to speak, right? And I think one of the best things you said, everyone was so happy to yeah. be there and be together, and that shared experience is what made it so memorable as well, not just the solar eclipse. And so quiet. You know how loud the National Mall yeah. is when there's that many people? It was, like, quiet, and then just that uproarious, like, cheering Aww. when we realized we all hit it. And it was beautiful. Gorgeous like day outside. Like, seeing you on the mall with this capital in the background, yeah. the sun shining. By, like, 5, 4.30, everyone was gone. I was like, people, it is yeah. a beautiful day on the mall in, in the capital out, of the right. free world. Things Where to do. Going. So DC, right? Totally. I got, I got, a, I got somewhere else to be. I took my Instagram picture. It's time to leave. <laughs> and over in Greenbelt, people were able to experience the eclipse at NASA's Goddard, Goddard Visitor Center. I mean, what a vantage point that should be, right? Totally. It was all eyes in the sky this afternoon as people made it themselves comfortable on the lawn. Look at that, enjoying viewing with special learning opportunities as well, including the visitor center held eclipse activities like a Corona art project. Oh. Uh, I want to see those for the refrigerator <laughs> and a sun spotter demonstration all to check out these solar moments. Very cool. Student staff and the community gathered at Bowie State University for a solar eclipse watch party today as well. Our Amy Cho spoke to some folks on campus today about today's rare event and how it brought everyone together. This is my daughter and I have the opportunity to share with her, so that's what I'm doing. This is perfect timing. She's been learning about it in school. She's super excited. How everyone celebrates the eclipse. I thought we should start every day like this, the way that we were just celebrating. <laughs> it's cool to see, like, everybody here. Um, usually I'm, like, just straight up in class all day, so um, I'm excited. I think I saw the um, sun smiling. What was your favorite part of today? The um, orange. It's been a minute since I saw solar eclipse. I think I saw one when I was, like, five and it was at school and we just put on the glasses it was fun my dad went temporarily blind because he looked at the sun without these glasses mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm. he said dad did not do it right yep uh, and I'm glad that everybody knew this time around you have to put the glasses on before you look at the sun even yeah. in partial totality right yeah and that, guy, that kid probably was five when 2017 happened right now he knows calling out dad on TV right. you love to see it. <laughs> Hundreds gathered there, as you can see on campus, to watch the eclipse together. A big celebration for sure. If you didn't get to see the eclipse today, you got a while to wait.
Yeah, that was the whole point of why we had to go see it today, right? You can put the email into H&R, mm -hmm. HR now to get your uh, request because it's going to be a while. The next one over the United States scheduled for 2044. Wow. Mm-hmm. But uh, that solar event's only going to pass Montana, North Dakota, and South Dakota. All right. Well, there are three locations we can send Doug to. Yeah. Right? And he can figure <laughs> it out there. And now um, we're no longer staring at the sun for the eclipse glasses. They are going to be going to a good cause elsewhere. This is really cool. Yeah, I like this idea. The Maryland Department of the Environment is asking that you mail your glasses to Eclipse Glasses USA. If you ship your glasses by August 1st, they'll send them to Latin America for children to use for the next eclipse visible there, right? So there are other eclipses just visible different parts of the world. I mean, we have a big world. That's the other thing yeah. he kept saying was that this is a reminder that we're just a small part of something much greater. Definitely. Yep. And maybe those T44 NBC4 glasses become like fruitcake. They just keep getting passed around oh, at the holidays. See on, you know, if they tag us, we yeah. can just see the traveling eclipse glasses <laughs> from NBC4. All right, coming up here on the News 4 Rundown Budget Day deadline in Virginia. What's in, what's out, and how it impacts everything from your health care to your money. Plus... I'm Tracy Wilkins. Coming up, the News for I team is continuing our coverage of the bankruptcy case filed by the Archdiocese of Baltimore. What survivors of child sex abuse had to say today in court and who was there to listen? Welcome back to the News for Rundown, a busy day across the country and here in our region. Let's take a look now at four things to know tonight. Crews are working to remove containers from the ship that crashed into Baltimore's Key Bridge nearly two weeks ago. The Coast Guard says the transfer of the containers will take several days. The work will allow salvage crews to access the portion of the Key Bridge that still lies on top of the ship. The Army Corps of Engineers hopes to have some commercial traffic moving through that channel by the end of April. President Biden has announced new plans to ease student loan debt for some. The key issue of young voters has Biden helping to get some support as he seeks re-election in November from that group. A new plan would eliminate accrued interest on loans of 23 million borrowers, cancel the full amount of student loan debt on some 4 million others, and give 10 million borrowers at least $5,000 or more in relief. Former President Donald Trump is clarifying his stance on abortion, stopping short of supporting a national ban. In a video post on his Truth Social platform, Trump said that abortion laws should be left to the states. The former president did not say what he would do, however, if he won the presidency and Congress sends him a national ban. Over the weekend, Maryland Congressman David Trone developed the fever and experienced symptoms of dehydration. By order of his doctor, the Senate candidate was told to seek further treatment. Trone was later diagnosed with a minor stomach infection and has since been discharged from the hospital. His campaign says he's feeling better and is expected to resume full campaign schedule in the coming days. An emotional day in a Baltimore courtroom as some men and women abused at the hands of priests told their stories of survival. The hearing was part of the Archdiocese of Baltimore's bankruptcy proceedings. The church filed for bankruptcy last month, just days before Maryland law took effect that would allow survivors to sue regardless of when their abuse happened. Investigative reporter Tracy Wilkins and the News 4i team were in the courtroom today. When the Archdiocese of Baltimore first filed for bankruptcy, survivors were afraid that they would never have the opportunity to tell their stories. Well, today, they got that opportunity. The judge provided a safe space for them, and the Archbishop of Baltimore was in the courtroom. Archbishop William Lurie of Baltimore entered the U.S. District Court in Maryland to hear firsthand what survivors of child sex abuse had to say about the Archdiocese and how they say his predecessors allowed priests and staff to sexually abuse them. I came as, as a priest and pastor and someone who hopes that by doing this, I can contribute in some small way to the healing. Judge Michelle Harner ruled to allow the survivors to address the court, something that isn't guaranteed in typical bankruptcy proceedings, saying the court will provide time and space for listening. Lori listened intently as six adults told the stories of how their lives, and in some cases, their will to live, were taken at the hands of church leaders whom they trusted. One survivor who kept her eyes on Lori as she told of the years of abuse she endured explained the importance of giving her testimony. I am grateful I am allowed this moment and you are listening to me. She hugged Lori after sharing her story. 
Other survivors were not as forgiving. I wanted him to hear what happened to all of us and realize the church could have acted a lot earlier than they did. Teresa Lancaster, who lived through years of sexual abuse in her Catholic high school, chronicled in the Netflix series The Keepers, said she suffered years of deep depression and dysfunction following her abuse. Lancaster spent decades advocating for the passage of the state's Child Victims Act. Enacted last year, the law allows survivors of sex abuse to bring civil claims regardless of when the abuse happened. We finally got it passed, and now the church is stomping on it, trying to destroy it. The Archdiocese of Baltimore filed bankruptcy just before the law took effect. But the Archdiocese of Washington has challenged the constitutionality of the Child Victims Act in two courts. It was upheld in Prince George's County last month and ruled unconstitutional in Montgomery County last week. A case against the Hartford County school system also upheld the law. We have talked with survivors who wonder why the church is fighting the CVA and the constitutionality of it. Where do you stand on that? Um, the reason we entered into Chapter 11 uh, was so that we could, in fact, help as many victim survivors as equitably as we can, while at the same time carrying forward the mission of the church. There are several challenges to Maryland's Child Victims Act making their way to Maryland Supreme Court. Meanwhile, attorneys who are involved in this bankruptcy process say they don't know how long it's going to take. It could be several months or longer. Meanwhile, survivors are encouraged to get their claims in by May 31st. In Baltimore, I'm Tracy Wilkins, News 4 I team. Tracy, thank you for that. And today, Virginia Governor Glenn Youngkin took action on the state budget and dozens of bills passed by Virginia Democrats. Two of the big noteworthy items, a cut to a new tax that was designed to help pay for teacher raises and a veto on an abortion-related protection. State Senator Barbara Favola introduced a bill that would prevent other states from extraditing Virginia health care providers who treated out-of-state patients. It passed the General Assembly and then Youngkin vetoed it. The medical community was, uh, by and large, strongly behind this bill. And, and you have to think that patients who are coming, who are traveling from out of state to come to a different state without their family, without their friends, they're alone. I mean, we should be able to provide those patients with an element of protection and peace of mind. Democrats will return to Richmond next week to consider the governor's 233 budget amendments. Big decisions made today in Annapolis that will impact your wallet. Maryland lawmakers have agreed on a budget that includes some tax and fee increases that will affect car owners, smokers, and those who use rideshare. News 4's Darcy Spencer sat down with the governor today to talk about the session and the latest on the key bridge collapse in Baltimore. Good afternoon. Maryland Governor Wes Moore said he's pleased with the $63 billion budget agreed on by lawmakers. It has some tax and fee hikes. The budget that we passed did not have any personal income tax increase, corporate income tax increase, sales tax increase, and that's for the second year in a row. The budget includes an increase in vehicle registration fees, a fee for ride sharing and hiked fines for speeding and construction zones. Smokers will pay more tax for cigarettes and vapes. And there's a new $50 surcharge for plug-in electric vehicles. Because they don't, they're not paying into a gas tax. And so it's only fair that they have pay their fair share into it since they are using the roads. The deal prompted former Republican Governor Larry Hogan, who's running for U.S. Senate, to say the old tax and spend ways of Annapolis have returned in full. That's the silliness of politics because it's just not true. The last day of the session comes nearly two weeks after the Francis Scott Key Bridge collapsed and the same day of a solar eclipse, something Moore said he didn't plan to watch. I actually just realized this morning that an eclipse was going on. We've been, uh, we've been a little busy. The bridge collapsed through the state and the governor into the national spotlight. As salvage work continues, he made it clear the bridge must be rebuilt and it's not a partisan issue. We're saying to do it because there's a patriotic duty to keep our economy going. Moore says all of his legislative priorities are being accomplished this year. Child care, housing, education and public safety. He says he's focused on making the state more competitive. We're proud of the progress that we're seeing, but we've got to get this economy going. The way we're going to get out of this is we've got to grow 
our way out of it. Lawmakers are still hard at work inside the state house. The session ends at midnight tonight and they will be working until the clock strikes 12. In Annapolis, Darcy Spencer, News 4. Thank you, Darcy. And one of those things they're working on is that bill for port workers and aid to get them the aid that they need affected by the bridge collapse and a deal to transform Pimlico Racecourse, the home of the Preakness Stakes. The National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial Fund hosted a ceremony honoring men and women who have died in the line of duty. Today, the names of 282 fallen law enforcement officers were engraved on the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial Wall in Northwest D.C. Now, back in 1991, the Memorial Fund was confident the space available on the original walls would be enough until the year 2100. 2100 and the CEO of the Memorial Fund says we are far outpacing those estimates and the Memorial Fund expects the walls to be needing 12,000 additional names and the names of those officers that were added today to the Memorial Wall will be read out loud on the 23rd annual candlelight vigil which happens on May 13th during police week. Well, after weeks of delays, D.C.'s new real-time crime center is now open. News 4 was first to tell you about the facility. It's going to bring together technology and law enforcement from around the region. And News 4's Mark Seagraves reports district officials are asking residents and businesses to register their security cameras with police. It's video like this D.C. police are hoping to get more access to. A gunman opening fire on Independence Avenue Southeast last week. DC's real time crime center is a hub for technology like shot spotters, license plate readers, traffic cameras, and security cameras, all funneled through this command center in police headquarters. Mayor Bowser and Chief Pamela Smith want residents and businesses to register their outdoor security cameras with police. If you register, you're not giving police access to your cameras only the location so if a crime happens near you they can notify you to check your camera i want to make it clear by simply registering your camera in no way are you giving mpd live access to your camera footage local businessman mark ein whose company castle systems provides security technology for businesses across the city is taking that a step further Ein has been organizing a network of private companies who have stepped up to share their surveillance cameras with police in real time. So today we're announcing not just the integration of this entire network into the new real time crime center, the push for more, but a commitment to another thousand cameras that we'll give to any business, any building who wants it installed so that they can be part of this network and, and we will and we will do that for you. Ein wants every business, big and small, to consider linking their cameras with the crime center. We really encourage people to do it. It really is a force multiplier. And if you can imagine when an event happens, most likely there is a private camera there. It's one thing after the fact to go see what happens, but sometimes in real time, that information and that feed and seeing what happened can be immensely helpful. And so that's what we're trying to facilitate. In the district, Mark Seagraves, News 4. And D.C. police says even if you register your camera, you are not required to hand over that video, even if you're asked for it. D.C. residents and businesses can still receive a rebate for installing outdoor security cameras of up to $500. All right, the News 4 Rundown will be right after. We'll be back right after this break. And all day we've taken you to totality as the country experienced a total solar eclipse. An event, not a place per se. It exactly. is a It's once. a state of mind. Totality right, is go. what you make it. Right. <laughs> it's once, maybe twice in a lifetime experience, definitely once in a generation. Mm -hmm. And while many of us here at home did not reach totality, we are taking you back through the partial eclipse from our region. Kind of makes you feel small, doesn't it? Very, 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 very tiny. It's cool to see like everybody here. Um, usually I'm like just straight up in class all day, so I'm, I'm excited. This is perfect timing. She's been learning about it in school. She's super excited. I am giddy, positively yeah. giddy yeah. about watching this solar eclipse.
It's like the big reminder that, hey man, we still exist in this natural system. There are big things out there like the moon going around the planet, and we're gonna get a spectacular show in the sky today. We should start every day like this, the way that we were just celebrating. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God, guys, this is just incredible. Oh, that was, it's been a spectacular day for sure. So good. You were a part of the big day oh, so right there good. on the mall. Love that out there. Wow. And I hope before the next eclipse, you find someone to love you as much as Doug Cameron loves eclipses. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Which, by the way, I believe that is up at NBCWashington.com. Oh, so we're checking we're gonna out. We're going to have to let him live that down a different day. <laughs> and that'll do it for the News 4 Rundown. Thanks for joining us. I'm Tommy McFly. And I'm Yang. We'll see you right back here tomorrow. Have a great night.